Minasan, welcome back as we continue our journey in our life, beginning and always. We're continuing where we left off last time, hopefully getting through another two uh, sections of the moments for step one. Uh, obviously last time it was really long, wasn't it? We're gonna actually do the long day and then we're gonna do ghosts and hopefully run away in fireflies next time. But we will see. It was another scorching summer day. The kind where no sooner had you finished one cup of water, you were already filling it up again. Everyone else had something on, so that afternoon it was just you and Shiloh. This didn't happen much, especially since Cove had arrived. Without Lizzie around, Shiloh looked to you for all the answers. It made you feel... frustrated. He was always wanting to hear what you thought instead of giving his own opinion and expected you to come up with the plans. It was hard work, especially on a on, for such a hot day. Blech. You drained yet another drink and frowned at the empty vessel. Your thirst was gone, but you still craved something icy cold and refreshing. Something sweet. Something like an ice cream cone. Nothing beat a classic creamy scoop of ice cream on a day like this. There was nothing like it to be found in the house. You knew that without needing to look, your moms didn't keep sweets in the house. Well, that is just... That is blasphemous! What kind of mother doesn't keep sweets in the house? Outside, there were probably plenty of places where such goodies could be obtained, but there, they were shops and demanded payment in exchange for their products. <sighs> you voiced your predicament out loud. I want an ice cream cone! Shiloh, who had been draped over the so sofa, perked up. Yeah, that sounds good! But we don't have anything like that in the house, and I don't have any money. Oh, let me check if I have any. Shiloh rummaged in his backpack and proudly produced an assortment of coins, plus one stray button. You set the button aside and counted the coins in neat piles. Just over a dollar, you announced this to Shiloh. He had almost certainly come to the same conclusion, but he'd been watching you expe expectantly. It's not enough. Sorry. I'm sorry. We'll need to find some more. Okay. The two of you lifted the couch cushions, stuck tiny hands de de down deep crevices in the sofa and under the furniture and scoured the back of the drawers. Most of what you found was useless or gross. Bent paper clips, fluffy wisps of dust, or sandy crumbs. But every so often you would strike silver or bronze and add it to the growing pile of coins. Dusty and disheveled from checking every room and squinting into every tiny nook, the two of you finished pooling your finds. Shiloh held his breath as you counted the coins once again. Two dollars, fifty-three cents, and two buttons. You didn't know when when the second button decided to join the party, but you were too pleased with your successful haul to throw it out. Um, is that enough? You figured he knew the answer without looking to you for confirmation, but the thrill of your success and the reward... Uh, reward that would follow canceled out any other feelings you might have had about that. Yeah! You can now afford something at the shops. Just one thing, but that was definitely better than none. Shiloh clapped his hands. Yay! The two of you dashed outside. The promise of sugar buoyed you into your destination where, breathless but happy, you sta stared at the overwhelming number of options. You knew what you wanted, but it wasn't just you who had contributed to the funds to get the treat. He seemed to notice your pause. Aren't you getting an ice cream cone? Shiloh asked as though he was entirely separate from the discussion rather than someone with a stake in the outcome. Do you mind? Shiloh cocked his head to the side. It was your idea. You should choose. Are you sure it's okay? Yeah! Really? Really! Pleased you bought the dessert you longed for. Sweet success. Finally, the reward for all your hard work was in your hands. You laughed at the soft ice cream, the sweetness perking you up. You held it out to Shiloh so he could take a turn. He shook his head. He could finish it. What? You're supposed to have some. You helped pay for it. He didn't want any? After everything he did to get it? That was weird. That was so weird. No, Shiloh, you have to take some. You have to also eat this. This was, this was a dual process to get us to have ice cream. I'm, hopefully, I'm loud enough for the microphone. It's not too far away, but it is, like, at an angle, and I'm not speaking directly into that angle. You tried to include Shiloh. Even if Shiloh said it was okay, 
Every story you'd ever seen on TV or read in a book said that sharing was caring. You stood your ground even as the treats started to trickle dangerously towards your fingers. It's only fair you have some. We both bought it. But you want it more than I do, and getting to play with is a lot of fun already. So you can have it. That's more fair. You held it out to him. But I want you to have some even more than I want to finish it, so eat your part. Relenting, Shiloh took the treat and gave it a taste. His eyes lit up. Thank you. It's really good. Thank you. You smiled, pleased with your good deed. You picked the best one. Did he mean that? Shiloh was always nice, no matter what happened. Even if he hated it, you knew he wouldn't say so. Maybe he thought it was gross and that was the real reason he didn't want to take some. You had no idea. You studied him as he ate a little more. He had every appearance of enjoying himself. Still weird. The two of you began to head back home as he ate. You walked side by side on the shore in silence, but your thoughts kept drifting to the boy beside you. Why didn't he speak up for himself? It was almost as if Shiloh didn't know how to say what he felt, or was too afraid to. Are we friends? Shiloh opened his eyes wide, seemingly caught off guard by the blunt question. Yeah, I think so. He says that, but friends should be able to talk to each other without being scared. If Shiloh wouldn't do that, were you even really friends at all? He rubbed his hands together nervously over your non-reaction. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Shiloh, don't be sorry. I'm just concerned. You weren't sure how sorry he could be without knowing if what he was even apologizing for, but you shook your head. You didn't do anything. It was true. Shiloh hadn't done something mean. He'd gone out of his way to make you happy. That didn't seem like it should be a bad thing, yet it bothered you. I just don't know if you like me. It's like it doesn't matter what I do. You're going to act the same. I could be anybody and you wouldn't care. N no, I like you. I really, really like you, Blue. I want to be friends. Okay. You smiled hesitantly at him as fidgeting ceased. Even though you weren't sure if you believed him, this was only making things worse. You decided that maybe there were all types of friends. If Shiloh wasn't able to do things differently, this would have to be all right. Shiloh made you unsure about setting a label on the experience of spending the afternoon with just him. There had been good times and there had been confusing ones. You were positive of one thing at least. The treat was delicious and that was nice. The sun was low on the horizon as you returned to your neighborhood. There you spotted two very familiar figures up ahead, Lizzie and Co. You opened your mouth to make your present known to them just as you saw the tears on Cove's face. You walked straight over, Shiloh at your heels. Once there, you... I'm asking what happened. I'm not gonna accuse Lizzie, because she also looks sad, but that, that could just be something. Without a time machine, the only way you were gonna find out was by asking the witness. Lizzie might have done something, but she could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, or even come to Cove's aid. You wanted to hear the story. Cove, what happened? Blue, I got yelled at. He took a deep, he took a deep steadying breath. Some grandparents got mad at me. Aw, sorry. Lizzie jerked her head at the direction of a nearby house. Your heart sunk. You knew exactly what had happened. Every year, the same mean old couple rented out that condo for the summer. You, Lizzie, and Shiloh knew to stay away from them, but Cove couldn't have. They're like that with everyone. Even your mom struggled to find anything nice to say about them, but the elderly pair particularly took offense to kids. It didn't matter if they were really nice like Cove. Yeah, Lizzie said. Lizzie drew herself up at that. She looked pointly at your direction. Uh -huh. uh, I was helping. I didn't accuse you of anything, god darn it. Don't blame me like I apparently accused you. I asked what happened. I was told. Like Lizzie, uh, don't, don't go there. That's cool. Is there anything I can do? No. No, I'm just gonna stay away. Or you could teach them a lesson. There was a devilish glint in her eyes. What? You should ding dong ditch them. Go ring the doorbell and run. It'll be great because they're so slow. They'll never catch you. That's dumb. I don't want to go near them ever again. You're just saying that because you're a frack, frack, frack chicken. Why is that line fully voiced? What in the world is this? Cove glared but didn't take the bait. Lizzie turned to you. You're not a chicken, are you? Uh, 
Uh, you'd rather just avoid them. You thought they deserved worse. I'll do it. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit to it. I'm gonna be proud, stand tall, and be a chicken. She can't tease you over being a chicken if you are, in fact, a chicken. Hunched over, you folded your arms in the form of wings and batted them up and down. Bark, bark, bark! For once, your sister seemed at a loss, but it didn't take long for her to regain her usual confidence. So you admit it! You continue to flap your arm wings as you circle your sister, clucking all the while. There's no shame in a chicken being a chicken. Yeah, yeah you're a chicken. There, things were not going the way Lizzie expected. She fought against a laugh and looked away for to restore her serious authority. You and Cove are both little chickens. <laughs> what? Cove folded his arms, though the one with the cast wasn't as tightly tucked down and joined you in chirping around. It was hard to cluck through the giggles that rose up when you saw him imitating a chicken, but you both gave a first-class performance. The door to the old couple's com condo flung open to reveal one of the culprits behind Cove's tears. You froze, wings raised. Can't you let anyone have a bit of peace and quiet? He must not be a fan of theater or farm animals, as well as kids. That was the only explanation for his outburst, which was far louder than anything you and Cove had done. Go on! Beat it! It was distinctly unfair, but Cove's lips were trembling and you thought it would be best to heed his command. Lizzie took off with Shiloh immediately trailing after her without as much as a glance back in your direction. So much for your friendship. You waved your arm at Cove, summoning him to follow you and ran after Lizzie. The old man's hollers propelled you all down the streets to the sanct sanctity of the hill. Only once you were saved did you notice the stitch in your chest and the ache in your legs. You flopped down, the blades of grass tickling your face. Lizzie, who had taken the lead in the end, had already lazing on the ground. The four of you took a moment to catch your breath and enjoy the feeling of cool grass against your skin. Cove. Cove lifted his head. I told you they were mean grandparents around here. Cove rolled his eyes, then decided it wasn't dismissive enough and rolled his whole body away from your sister. Lizzie chose to ignore his response and started chatting with Sh to Shiloh, who eagerly joined in the conversation. In the back of your mind, you knew you'd be second fiddle again to Shiloh once Lizzie came around. It always went like that. Shiloh could prefer Lizzie as much as he wanted to. There were other things to attend to anyway. You wrangled... Wiggled, wrangled closer to Cove. He had calmed down for the most part and was inspecting a flower. His fingers pinched at the stem and tilted the white petals towards him. That's a poppy. Cove glanced at you in acknowledgement, then back to the flower. And the type of poppies on this hill have a name, white linen poppy, mom told me. He quirked a smile. That's funny. He ran a finger around the edges of the petals. It doesn't feel like cloth. You need to get a lot of them to make anything. He nodded and released the delicate plant. Evaluation complete. This is my favorite kind of flower, but I didn't know what it was called. Thanks. I like roses. I like roses. Ooh, snapdragons. They smell really nice. Those are fancy flowers. You'd look good with them. Why? Because you just, you would. Look how pretty, look how adorable he is. He's adorable right now. He stopped the conversation there, suddenly shy. Oh, look how pretty my boy is. You moved onto your back with a small smile as you looked at the darkening sky. Ah, not what I wanted, sorry guys. The blanket of clouds reminded you of a thick throw as you cover, as you curled under on cold, raining days. You wondered if the clouds were just as soft. These la they lazily floated on by, splitting from each other and merging and morphing into new shapes. You saw you saw a dolphin leaping through the sky. You nudged Cove and pointed to it. Look, a dolphin! Cove joined you in gazing skyward. Yeah, I see it. Really? Mm. No, but I like dolphins. Hey! He chuckled at your reaction. 
Chuckle at my reaction all you want, Cove. I saw a dolphin. All the sun's light faded from the sky and the moon rose higher. Lizzie got to her feet, dusting strands of grass from her bare legs and surveying her surroundings. The ocean, visible from the crest of the hill, beckoned with every sweep of the tide. Let's go to the beach! There was no argument from the other two. Shiloh was still Shiloh and Cove would never say no to going to the shore. He was a child of the sea. You... I'm going to object. I think we need to go home. It's like really dark out. I don't want to. <laughs> Tough. It's three against one and it was my idea. It was my good idea. Sighing, you trugged after the others. You stepped into the sand for the second time that day, but it felt different at night. The beach was nearly quiet at this hour. Abandoned sand castles and footsteps in the sand, too big to belong to any of you, were the only indication of how busy it had been only hours earlier. The four of you kicked shoes off and removed socks and walked along the water's edge. The waves tickled your feet. I wonder what would happen if you tried to take a bath in the ocean with shampoo and everything. That would be bad for the fish. Jeez. I didn't say anyone would do it. Jeez, you don't have to be serious about everything. You're the one who asked what would happen. That is what would happen. You, it hurt the fish. Uh, uh, I like bubble baths at home. They're a lot of fun. Me too! Bubbles baths are luxurious! You'd never heard Lizzie use that word before. Mommy loves to have bubbles in her baths. She'll turn the lights off and have candles. I'm gonna do that next time. Hey, when's your mom coming to pick you up anyway? Not for a while. She's busy. Hmm. What about your dad? How come you never talk about him? No one does. Don't you know you're not supposed to ask something like that? Why would someone want to talk about something they never talk about? You kept your eyes on the ground, watching your toes get swallowed by the waves. Even if Shiloh never seemed upset when this topic came off, it made you feel awkward just for having both your moms. It's okay. I'm just like Lizzie and Blue. I don't have a dad. Um, but I don't have two moms. I just have one. She's really great. Oh, sorry. I only have one now, too. My mom isn't here. She's back home. It's just dad with me. Sorry. Aw, I never had a dad or anything. So don't feel bad. It's really sad that your mom is gone. Cove nodded. Yeah. Yeah. Cove couldn't muster a response. You didn't think he truly disagreed, though. The silence broke with a splash as Lizzie kicked it in your direction. Cold water and sodden sand splattered against your legs. Lizzie giggled, foot still at stretch from the kick. Cove joined in, striking the incoming waves to make a splash of his own. Shiloh scurried out of Cove's spray zone with a grin. You retaliated! You used your foot to smack water pulling around you, sending an arc of sea foam flying back into your sister. You laughed as she spluttered, some of the seawater having landed in her mouth. She spat it out. Yuck! Lizzie chased you, intent on revenge. You dashed up and down the coast, taking in the turns, taking in turns to be the predator and the prey, as well as joining forces to take down Shiloh or Cove. Alliances were silently forged and wordlessly broken. Everything was fair game in war. Uh, ah! Shiloh's brief, brief explanation was drowned out by the biggest splash yet, causing caused by him falling face first into the ground that would have been big enough without the wave that followed cascading over his prone body. Shiloh sat up, shaking his head like a dog coming in from the rain as you all hurried over to check on him. His hair was plastered to his head and his soaked clothes clung. If there was any part of him that was still dry, you couldn't see it. That was crazy, are you okay? Yeah, my foot got stuck and I fell over. Way to go, Shiloh, you dumbo. Shiloh didn't take her outstretched hand. After a moment, you dropped it. Lizzie was too big busy snickering to notice and held her hand out to Shiloh, too. He reached over and took it. Slowly, he started to pull himself from the ground. He then slipped on the slick sand, dragging him and Lizzie down just in time for another wave to hit. The water rolled over them. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Hell on. It's adorable. What were the odds of it happening twice in a row? You thought they must be low, but there was no way Shiloh would do something like that on purpose, then pretend it was an accident, especially not to Lizzie. Even if your relationship with Shiloh felt unclear, he did at least like her a, a lot. Lizzie was his favorite, right? Smiling boldly, Lizzie extracted herself from the ground and wiped a streak of sand from her cheek. She didn't intend to let this embarrassment this embarrass her. 
Shiloh got up again as well, and this time without incident. He still looked like a drowned puppy, but that didn't stop Cove laughing at the two of them. With that, it was time to call it a day. The four of you drug drudgingly made your way back home, leaving a trail of wet footsteps and sand in your wake as damp clothes weighed the group down. Your moms were outside, chatting with Cove's dad. We're back! Your mom's faces fell as they took in the state you were all in, ranging from messy to soaked. No. Elizabeth, is that all you have to say for yourself? You brought half the beach back with you. They certainly did. What's Marigold going to do when she comes to get Shiloh? Is that how you want him to be for a long drive home, cold and filthy? Lizzie's expression turned sulky over the scolding. Being the oldest could be fun, but it also meant she was the first to get in trouble when something went wrong. I know, that that's just the sucky thing of growing up. You're in trouble all the time. Mr. Holden, on the other hand, chuckled as he ruffled Cove's matted hair. <laughs> You've been out making memories, bucko. I'm glad you had a good time with your friends. Cove used his slightly moist cast to push his dad off. Mr. Holden's eyes widened as he noticed that that had gotten wet. Now he was worried, too. I think they could have found a much less risky way to spend the time and had just as much fun. That might be right, kids. What can you do? Come on, Cove. Let's get you cleaned up and dried off. We wouldn't want a, that cast to have to be reset. Cove winced at the thought. Okay. That a boy. Mr. Holden casually bent down and plucked Cove off the ground, ultimately hoving, holding Cove against his chest. Sand was already transferring from Cove onto him, but that didn't seem to bother Mr. Holden. Cove protested being carried, but only got a reassuring pat on the back for his troubles. Take care. Good night, Cove. Thank you for the talk, Cliff. Night, Flame family and Shiloh, too. Resigned to his fate, Cove twisted his body in his dad's arms to turn around and wave goodbye. Smiling, you wave back. Good night. Oh, well, we better do what we can to fix you guys up, too. Come on, everyone. Inside, I want you to march straight to the downstairs bathroom. Ugh. Yes, Mom. Okay, Lizzie's mom. Don't worry about stopping to wipe your feet at the mat this time. That won't do much good tonight. Sitting on an old beach towel your mommy had found, you waited in the hall until you were less sandy. You weren't allowed to go to your room or walk around the house, but you didn't get. To, but you did get to eat a sandwich for dinner there. It felt like an indoor picnic. It had been decided that Shiloh would wash first and borrow some of your clothes. He was already finished and packed away in his mom's car. Miss Fields had come to collect him a little while ago. It was a bit funny experience seeing him without his, that hat on for once. Lizzie, being more soaked than you, got to go in the tub next. It wasn't a bubble bath she had hoped for. This was a no-fun-allowed cleanup session. At least that's what she claimed. Not much longer and it would be your turn. When the bath was done, you'd have to go right to bed. After a day like this, though, you were glad it was there wasn't going to be any further events. Drifting off to sleep sounded like a great idea. And we're going to do ghosts! That was long, but definitely not as long as the other ones, but we're still going to run over 30 minutes, aren't we? The night was incredibly still. You couldn't ignore how silent it was. It was almost eerie. You could even hear Lizzie snoring in the next room over. It was hard to believe how much of a blur today was. Summer sure did slip right past you. You flick through the moments like pages in a scrapbook as you laid in bed. The ones that stuck out all seemed to include your new neighbor, Cove. It was funny how he had become such a big part of your life in such a short span of time. You thought a lot about what adventures you could have tomorrow until sleep started to catch up to you. Then you heard something scrape against the window. It wasn't uncommon for the wind to push a tree branch against, against glass. Summer breezes were the worst sometimes. But the more you tried to ignore it, the louder it seemed to be like it became. It was like it, something was trying to get your attention. You lifted your head off the pillow to get a better look. Nothing was there. Nothing you could see, at least. <gasps> you had to investigate! You practically jumped out of bed and crept down the stairs to go outside. Your moms were still awake. They stayed up so late, it seemed. Luckily, they were watching TV and didn't hear the soft click of the front door opening as you slipped past. You looked around the neighborhood for a few seconds, checking over each individual house. It looked normal, but it didn't feel that way. You knew you weren't supposed to be out right now. Your chest was light. You couldn't keep the grin off from your face. No one had permitted you to go out. In fact, no one even knew you were out. And yet, here you were. You wondered what else you could do. What other rules were so ingrained that you would never even consider that they could be broken? Blue? You twitched at the sudden call. Immediately 
calming down upon seeing Cove walking up to you. It was strange and yet so completely normal to have him appear like this right now. What are you doing? I saw you standing around in the middle of the street from my window. You weren't sleeping either? Why not? Cove turned up his lips to smile, almost as if he were amused by the question. Because... Did you hear a weird noise? You could tell it you hit the nail on the head by the way his eyes widened. Of course I hit the nail on the head. Why wouldn't I hit the nail on the head? Obviously, we're talking about a ghost. Yeah, you knew? I heard it too. That's why you came out, huh? Cove hesitated for a moment, looking down the street before his aquamarine eyes fell on you again. <sighs> Did it scare you? A little? Me too. I feel better that you're here. Me too. The two of you had the two of you delicately smiled at that. Cove even chuckled a bit. It was nice that you both felt the same way about things. It was kind of wondering if it was the wind, but what if it's not? What if it's a person? What if it's something that's not a person? The unsettling noise suddenly rushed through the air. Cove and you flinched. It sounds even worse than before. You were about to agree with him when the noise came yet again, tearing through the still night. The two of you rapidly looked around, trying to find the source, but to no avail. There was no sign of an answer to this puzzle. You thought that... It could be anything. You weren't going to rule out possibilities yet. It was a mystery. Do you think it was a ghost? It might be. I don't know. The thought of some sinister, invisible thing lurking in the darkness wasn't exactly a pleasant one. Cove seemed downright terrified at the notion. At least as long as the two of you stuck together, everything would be okay. Hey, can you tell which where it's coming from? Not really. Not, oh. Then we have to look more somewhere else. Maybe we'll see something. Okay, let's go. You clustered together as you walked the familiar str streets of your neighborhood, drawing strength from each other's presence. Shadows cut corners and angles where you didn't expect them, distorting the features you saw every day. The noise came again, shrill and hard. It set your teeth on edge the way it ground its way through you. Cove's throat bobbed. His eyes glistened in the dim light. You really wanted to be there for him and wanted to show that. Your hand was left up for him to take. Cove's mouth opened wordlessly. There was a pause, but ultimately he accepted the offer. His hand was really sweaty, but it didn't bother you. Look how adorable this boy is! This boy is adorable! God, it's so cute. You were scared too, but being able to comfort Cove was the most important thing right now. Cove shut his eyes and pressed his lips together. Your fingers locked around each other even tighter. So... Where do you want to check? Da boo 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 boo. Da hills. You and Cove ascended the hill, lit only by the stars of the night sky. Without the sun's light to translate what you were seeing, every brush in the distance looked like a creepy figure or a towering monster. The noise was just as loud here as it was in your neighborhood, with just as little indication behind the cause. But you kept going forward. You couldn't stop when you had already gone so far. You had to find out what was going on. The top of the hill was an excellent vantage point to survey the town from... Everything appeared normal. There was no out-of-place sight pinpointing the answer to this mystery. Without visible markers to guide your way, you supposed it was up to you and Cove to deduce the source of the sound. The hill had many great hiding places. You intended to check them all. You upturned rocks, peered up trees, and rummaged in the thick grass for anything that might bring some closure to all this. You stuck close to Cove as you hunted for the source of the noise. When the shrieking noise shook the air, seeing him beside you calmed your racing heart. Seeking to ease your nerves and put aside thoughts of what might be out in the dark, spooky night, you decided to strike up a conversation. You searched for topics was more fruitful than your search for the noise. Your eyes fell on Cove's cast and you were instantly inspired. Have you broken any other bones? No. No? Oh. It turned out it wasn't much of an engaging topic for him after all. I broke my leg once. Let, let's say I broke my leg once. He winced emphatically. That sounds really bad. I'm okay. That put an end to your injury discussion, but Cove's calmer mood ele elevated the bleak atmosphere like you hoped it would. Cove cast his eyes out to the darkness, feeling bolder. 
Does this make you feel strange? We were people who heard weird noises at night and are out looking for it, what it is. It's like we're at the start of a book or a movie and we're the main characters. Yeah. It's an action story. When they went out to investigate, they didn't expect to uncover diamond smugglers. Why? Why would thieves make a bunch of noise? Shouldn't they be extra quiet? This is all a distraction that they set up to hide their real crimes. They'll explain it all when we stumble in their base. Then we'll break free and get the police. Well, whatever the noise was, you were confident that you would establish that it was not coming from the hill. Once you were satisfied nothing of the ordinary was to be found on the hill, you had to consider your next step. The sheen of adventure had worn off and you were longing to be snuggled up in bed. Whatever the noise had been, it would have to wait to be explored another day. Let's go back home. Cove looked at you for a moment and you couldn't quite tell how he was feeling about your declaration. Yeah, okay. It was a relief he stuck with you on this. You would not have wanted to leave without him. The two of you made a journey home together, your shoulders bumping every now and then as you attempted to stay close for safety. As you moved yet closer, you were glad that Cove had come out to join you. The two of you came to a halt outside your front door. Never before had it looked so ominous. Now to sneak back inside. Do you sneak out a lot? Oh. I only do it for you, buddy! It was strange how much bolder you had become since he showed up. Are you worried about getting caught? No. no. Why? He was so forthright that you believed him completely. But your dad, won't he get mad or sad if he catches you? He's never happy with what I do. Oh. Your dad's just worried about you. He cares. It doesn't matter if he worries if he's the one who makes things worse. Hmm. All right, I'm going in. Bye. Okay, good night. Good night, Cove. Thanks for coming with me tonight. I'm not sure I could have done it by myself. I wanted to go with you. Hearing that caused your face to heat up. You turned the doorknob slowly as the clock's minute hand, holding your breath for the telltale click of the lock and then nudged it open. With all that happened, the door was opening. Rather than blaring alarms, you feared you melted with relief. But back inside your house, you were surprised to find your mom still watching TV. Weirder still, it looked like they were on the same show they were watching before you left, yet you were positive you'd been out investigating for hours. Perhaps you could use their distraction to your advantage. If you get up the stairs, you were safe from suspicion, but how could you get up there? I'm gonna walk nonchalantly. Sometimes the best you could do was hide in plain sight. You strode across the room to the direction of the staircase. Blue? Your moms knew you were up, but they had no idea why. They abandoned the couch of their show to hurry over. They were still in a state of surprise. You weren't in trouble yet. Are you okay? What are you doing down here, sweetie? Did you have a bad dream? Da, da, da. I, I don't want to tell the truth, but I also don't want to lie, and I don't want to not answer. I'm fine. I went out to find out what was causing a noise. Time seemed to drag as the color drained from your mom's face. Huh? Out where? Out of your bedroom? That's what you mean, right? Yes! Yes, absolutely! I'm not going to tell you I actually went out the door. Please say that I'm not going to say that. You pointed to the front door, confirming their worst fears. Mommy remained frozen in shock while Mom launched into lecturing mode. Blue Flame! It is not safe to be out at this time of night by yourself. If something was wrong, you should have come to us. I thought you knew better than that. I trusted you to know better than that. Anything could have happened to you. If we don't know where you are, it's a lot harder to keep you safe. Her voice was soft, yet it still cut deep. You pawed at the ground with your feet. What they were saying made sense. It was scary, but I don't like being scared. I just wanted to see what was there. Sweetie. Honey. Mommy wrapped her arms around you, cradling the back of your head. You clung to her. You're brave for facing your fears, but you need to be smart too. It was scary because it might possibly have been something dangerous, right? That kind of worry is something you should tell us about. That's enough. This is serious, Blue. You barely finished up your punishments from the last time you snuck out of the house. It can't keep happening. Well, you your head hung low. You felt bad about upsetting your moms again. Mom shook her head with a sigh. Let's get you back to bed where you belong. Right, and we'll have a talk about this in the morning. 
You pulled a face at that, but didn't protest. All things considered, they could have been much harder on you. Once your moms had left, you turned over the night's adventures in your mind. It was still hard to believe you'd really done it. Sure, you were going to keep to be get a talking to tomorrow, but it had been a night that you were never that you'd never forget for better or worse. You hoped that Cove had gotten home okay. Though he hadn't been worried, being told off was never fun. Wriggling down deeper under the covers of the sheets, your thoughts turned to the unsolved mystery. You and Cove had only just begun to scratch the surface of it. Maybe you'd solve it, maybe you wouldn't, but knowing that you had shared it with him made you feel like you were being tickled from the inside. You hugged a pillow to your chest, tossing and turning as you replay the night's events in your mind, daydreaming about different ways they could have gone. Any fear or danger that might have been there was entirely overshadowed by thinking on how close you have you've been with Cove the entire trip. Your daydreams ushered you into sleep with a smile on your face. In the morning, a new punishment had to be con cu conducted since the previous one hadn't been convincing enough. Your bedtime was going to be set even earlier than usual for a while and they were going to keep an extra close eye on you to make certain no more nightly trips were made. You had no choice but to live with it. You later learned Cove didn't end up in trouble whatsoever. It was unclear whether that was because his dad chose not to punish him or if Cove got away with it. As for the sound that started this all, the adults around were convinced it was nothing more than the wind. For your imaginative mind, it wasn't nearly enough. How could they accept something so simple so easily? Maybe it made more sense when you were grown up too? And there we go, guys. We've got two more moments and we will finally be done with step one. Thank you all so much for joining me. But see, look at that. That second moment like took nothing. The ghost took nothing, but the other one took forever. Thank you so much for joining me as we completed our life uh, beginning and always. Obviously, we're going to continue where we left off. We're going to finish those two other moments. And then we're finally going to finish step one and move on to step two, where we get to meet our little preteen boy. Thanks once again for joining me. I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye, everyone.